Hello everyone, my name is Islam. I'm one of the developers of the Bitcoin integration. The Bitcoin integration is a feature on the internet computer that allows canisters to now securely hold, send and receive Bitcoin. And this tutorial is going to be focused on deploying your very first Bitcoin dApp. It's going to be a very simple dApp that can send and receive Bitcoin on the Bitcoin testnet network. However, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with some of the concepts of the internet computer. So if something like cycles or canisters or DFX don't sound familiar to you, then I would encourage you to check those out uh, in some of our documentation on internetcomputer.org. Okay, let's get started. So here I have the Definity examples repository open. This is a repository that contains a number of different examples, including the Bitcoin app that we are going to be deploying. And on the left here, I had already cloned this repository and navigated to the Rust slash basic Bitcoin folder. This example is available in both Rust and in Motoko. I'm using Rust for the purposes of this tutorial, but all of the instructions uh, apply equally well to Motoko as well. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy. So this is a command to deploy this canister to the IC network. So we are deploying this canister to production. And I am specifying that I want to connect to the testnet Bitcoin network. Uh, currently, the internet computer supports the Bitcoin testnet. In the future, there will be mainnet support so then i would be able to specify mainnet here and then my dap would be working with bitcoin mainnet uh, specifying a network here is also useful for local development which is something that i'll be covering in uh, in a separate tutorial as well so let's go ahead and run this so this is compiling the canister in the background and it is then deploying this canister to the internet computer Okay, so now I can access the interface of this canister using this link. So this is opening the Candid UI, which is this graphical UI that you can use to interact with your canister. Uh, you can alternatively use the command line if you wish. This makes it a little bit easier for the demonstration. So here are the different endpoints that are available on the canister. For example, there is get pay to public key hash address. And if I were to call this, this is using uh, what is called the Threshold ECDSA API. So this is an API that lets the canister uh, get uh, securely get ECDSA public key. And then we are transforming this key into, in this case, a pay to public key hash address. You can use uh, or transform the ECDSA public key into any type of a Bitcoin address uh, that works for you as long as it is based on an ECDSA key. So here I have a, uh, a Bitcoin address. So this is the Bitcoin address for my canister and I can generate multiple ones. And if I were to look this up in a block explorer, I can see that we don't have any Bitcoin at all yet. Uh, I can also look up the balance directly on my canister. So if I were to paste here my address, now this is using the Bitcoin API uh, in order to fetch the balance that is associated with this address. You can query the balance of any address on the Bitcoin network. And as you can see here, the balance is still zero. Since we are on a Bitcoin testnet, I can give myself some Bitcoin by going to one of the testnet faucets. Here is one of them. I can paste in the address of my canister that I want to top up. This is going to top it up with 0 0.0001 Bitcoin. So I can click send testnet Bitcoin. You may need to solve some kind of captcha. Hopefully I did this right. Testnet faucets can be really slow. Okay, here we go. So here uh, we have now been sent uh, some testnet Bitcoin. So if I were to go to the block explorer and refresh, now we can see that we have a little bit uh, of Bitcoin. However, 
this Bitcoin is still unconfirmed. You can see it has still zero confirmations. And until it has at least one confirmation, then the canister cannot see this information. This is still an unconfirmed transaction. So we're going to have to wait for a couple of minutes for this transaction to be confirmed. And then we'll be able to see it uh, in our address. So I'm going to go ahead and wait. Maybe I'll refresh uh, every, every minute or two. Yeah, this can take on testnet. Sometimes it can take a few seconds, sometimes it can take 20 minutes. Hopefully we're not unlucky. Okay, so I've waited a few minutes. If I were to refresh, yes, so now we have one confirmation and now you can see that we have some Bitcoin in the balance of our canister. And so if I were to go back to the interface of my canister and query my balance again, I should see the updated balance that includes the Bitcoin that we had just received. So again, this is using the Bitcoin API and you can see the result is 10,000. These are in Satoshi. So 10,000 Satoshi is equivalent to the very small amount of Bitcoin that we had received. So that uh, is when it comes to receiving Bitcoin. Let's try sending some Bitcoin from this canister. So for example, maybe I can look at the transaction. Uh, I'm going to send back some Bitcoin to the testnet faucet that I got it from. So I'm going to copy its address. Now let me go and specify the destination address here. I'll put in some small amount. So this is going to take a while, uh, but I'm going to explain what is happening in the background. So the first thing it's doing is it is using the Bitcoin API to get some information on past fees. So we're able to get some fee percentiles to come up with a reasonable fee estimate for the transaction. Then we are getting the UTXOs for our canister, the one for this address. And then we are using these two pieces of information to build a Bitcoin transaction. And then we are signing this transaction using the threshold ECDSA API. And then finally, we're sending that transaction to the network. So as you can see here, uh, now we have sent a transaction to the network. This is the transaction ID below. And if I were to go back to the Explorer and refresh, you can now see that this transaction uh, is listed in the mempool. So here we are sending uh, the small amount that we set, that we specified to the testnet uh, faucet address, and then we got back this change. Again, we will have to wait for at least one confirmation for us to see this change in the canister. But there you have it. I think that covers the basics of deploying a dApp to the internet computer that can send and receive Bitcoin, in this case, Bitcoin testnet. Please do uh, check out some of the resources in the description that includes written versions of these tutorials. I'm also going to be uh, covering how you can debug Bitcoin dApps locally in another tutorial. Uh, also check out the forums if you have any questions, and we look forward for your feedback. Thank you.